What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right, before I get to the video, I want to remind you guys, don't do this as much as I used to, but I just want to remind you guys, as always, if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed to Too Raw for TV, please subscribe to Too Raw for TV. If you haven't, hit that notification button. Hit that notification button so that you'll be notified of any and every video that drops my channel as soon as it drops. And if you like or at least appreciate the content on this channel, please hit that like button. You know what I'm saying? These are things that help not only my channel, but other channels in the LDBC, the Lions Den basketball community, be that much better. If you want to show love for Too Raw for TV, you want to contribute to this channel, if you choose to, you can do so in the links provided in the description box below via the PayPal or the Cash App. And finally, I want to let you guys know that if you want to uh, support Too Raw for TV on the Patreon, you can do so in the, links, the link in the description box as well. Uh, I have I think 70 videos up now on the Patreon. I've um, been uploading a little bit slow this month, man, but I will be catching up, you know what I'm saying, for the, the subscribers on the Patreon, man. We'll be uploading our content tonight and tomorrow on the Patreon. And it's only $2 per month because I know people got bills they got to pay and whatnot. So it's only $2 per month man, on the Patreon. All right, now, this video has been prompted by the fact that uh, I'm starting to see this a little bit more. I saw it last week. Shaq addressed it on TV. I still see more articles talking about it like, who's the better duo LeBron and AD or Kobe and Shaq? And it's just... Look, I know that really these things shouldn't be taken seriously. And these things really don't have an answer. It's all opinion. You know what I'm These things really can't be Proven, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it gets kind of annoying, man. It gets a real, it gets really annoying on so many different levels. First of all, Anthony Davis hasn't even played 50 games as a Laker yet, right? I don't think he's played 40 games as a Laker. You cannot compare Anthony Davis to any other of the big men, the great big men in the history of the Lakers. You can't compare him to George Mikan. Would, would he beat George Mikan one-on-one? Probably, yeah. Okay, if you could put the 1952 version of George Mikan in today's NBA, yeah, he probably would beat a one-on-one. -on -one. That's not my, that's not what I'm, that's not what I'm debating here. That's not what I'm questioning here. What I'm questioning is what George Mikan was able to accomplish as a then Minneapolis Laker his dominance in the game, what he was able to accomplish, which was to bring five NBA championships to the franchise. Davis hasn't done anything yet. So you can't compare him yet to Mike or Chamberlain or Jabbar, you know what I'm saying, Shaq. Shit, even Pau Gasol, even Andrew Bonham. You can't compare him to none of these guys yet because those guys have hardware. Those guys played considerable time for the franchise. Those guys put in their work. You know what I'm saying? You got to respect that. Davis hasn't done anything. LeBron's done a little bit more. This is his second year, but he hasn't done anything yet. And no matter what LeBron James has done in his illustrious career, as a Laker, he hasn't done anything yet. Okay? Just like I, I, I made this comparison before. Michael Jordan, the greatest Chicago Bull of all time. But I would never... Never call him, you know, I would never say he belongs in the Wizards Hall of Fame. You know what I'm saying? Like the great Wizards players. No. He didn't do much. You know, he played two years. He averaged like 22 points a game those two years. And they just missed the playoffs each year. Pretty good career with him for two years. But he didn't do enough to be on some great list. You know, he, he has done enough to pass a guy like even Phil Chenier. So that's the thing, man. But this is what I think irritates a lot of Laker fans, man. I think the LeBron fans, the extreme LeBron fans, are irritating the Laker fans. Um, because they're bringing a lot of their bullshit over to Lakers Nation. And Lakers Nation is probably the strongest fan base in, in the NBA. I mean, you can make an argument for the Warriors right now, but they're fickle. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've always been pretty 
I've always been pretty suspicious of that Warrior fan base. You know, don't get me wrong, there are some real, true Warrior fans out there, but a lot of those guys were just fair with the fans. The, the Lakers, Lakers Nation, I will give them this, man. They are very, very loyal to that franchise. A little bit entitled sometimes, you know what I'm saying, in the past, maybe, but look, this is how high the bar is for Lakers. Okay, Laker fans. Laker fans expect excellence. That, that only changed over the past several years, okay? In the warning years of the Kobe Bryant era, the team started declining. The team around Kobe wasn't as good. Kobe himself, after the Achilles injury, was not the same player. So the performance of the franchise began to deteriorate. You know, it began to deteriorate. And the Laker fans have, for the most part, I don't want to say they've become used to mediocrity. They're not the New York Knicks. But they've kind of adjusted to lower, somewhat lowered expectations. But this is why, you know, some people might say shit like, okay, and this is why, you know what I'm saying, people got to understand where Ticket TV is coming from as a Laker fan. This is why I know where it's coming from. See, look, Ticket, I'm, I'm assuming Ticket is about the same age as I am. I'm, I'm damn near 40, okay? I've been watching basketball for 30 years now. The Lakers have always been one of the best teams in the NBA. And for the most part of the history of the NBA, the Lakers have been one of the better teams in the NBA. Now, the Lakers have missed the playoffs for the past six seasons, Okay? They've not been in the playoffs for six years. That's the, by far the longest drought in the history of that franchise. But for the first 65 years of that existence, all right, in the first 65 years of that franchise existence, they missed the playoffs only five times in 65 years. That was the level of excellence that the Los Angeles Lakers operated under for so long. In the 73 years that the NBA has been around, the Lakers have been in the finals 31 fucking times. So 42% of the time over the past 73 years, the Lakers have been in the NBA Finals. They've won the championship 16 times. All right? Or second only to the Boston Celtics. They're looking to tie the Boston Celtics this year. But this is why Laker Nation is so hard on LeBron. It's not necessarily hating on him. But you look, 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 put, put yourself in, in Laker fans' shoes for a moment. I know it's really hard for a lot of people to do, empathize. People can't seem to put themselves in other people's shoes anymore. But imagine you're a Laker fan. You wake up every fucking day, and you hear guys like Shannon Sharp, and you hear guys like Chris Prasad, and you hear guys like Nick Wright, and you hit, hear guys like, you know, Ryan Hollins. I don't know how the fuck he has a job. You know, you hear all these guys. You hear uh, 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 Colin Cowherd. You hear all these guys every fucking day bloviating so much about how great LeBron James is. He's the best player we've ever seen, all right? And he's still the best player. He makes everybody around him better. And, you know, uh, he, he drag a bunch of bumps to the finals. And, you know, he rehashed the same thing. And he's, you know, he, he, he single-handedly, you know, even though they forget about Kyrie Irving, but he single-handedly uh, defeated that 73-9 and juggernaut team. And, you know, he's beaten all these great teams in the finals. And he's won three championships. And he's been the eight consecutive finals. He's won nine, and he went to nine finals altogether. And he's the modern day Bill Russell, all the finals he went to. And he's the greatest small forward of all time. And he can do it all. He's the most amazing, most talented player we've ever seen in our fucking lives. But there's an excuse for them every time they lose. There's an excuse every time the Lakers excuse me, there's an excuse every time this guy's lost in the finals. Or the Warriors team was just too stacked. Or he had an injury. Or, you know, he just wasn't inspired enough. Or his team wasn't good enough. Or, as we all remember, in the, in the I think it was 2014 finals, he had cramps. So when you're a Laker fan and you've watched greatness consistently throughout the franchise, the history of the franchise, from the 50s, 
when they first became a franchise. The Lakers, I think, won three championships their first three years of existence. Coming into the league, smoking the league. Great, great players throughout the franchise history. I mean, you got George Mike and Vern Mickelson, uh, Jim Pollard, uh, Slater Martin, Elgin Baylor, Rudy LaRusso, Jerry West, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, Gail Goodrich, Wilt Chamberlain, Adrian Dantley played for the Lakers, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson, James Worthy, Bob McAdoo, Michael Cooper, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, Kyle Gasol, Andrew Brown, what a wasted potential, but he was a force for a little while. All of these great players, Nick Van Exel, the Lake Show, they weren't the showtime, but they were entertaining and they, they could, you know, they made a little noise. All these great players, all these great teams, these all-time great championship caliber teams. Your expectations are fucking high, man. Okay? You don't want to hear this bullshit. There's no excuses. Okay? Laker fans don't want to hear that shit, man. All this hype and hoopla about this guy when he first signed with the Lakers last year. Okay? Last year was supposed to be the year where this will be build up, the build-up to this year. But no. The expectations were they tinkered with a title. They failed miserably. Now, LeBron did get injured. Okay? But he's healthy this year, right? Come champ, come finals time, or come playoff time, if this team loses, Laker fans are not going to want to hear no none of that shit, man. They're not, they don't want to hear nothing about 17 years because the media don't want to give them that shit, you know? You know, no, that's not, that's not. You can't sit there and say LeBron James is playing unbelievable. You know, he's playing out of this world. Then when he loses, well, LeBron is in his 17th season. Nope, don't want to fucking hear it. Don't want to fucking hear it. If the Chicago Bulls had lost to the Utah Jazz as a Bulls fan, nobody wanted to hear me make no excuse. Well, Jordan is 35 years old. Fuck you, Michael. That was what you were saying yesterday, nigga. We don't want to hear it. Us non-LeBron fanatics, I'm not a Laker fan, but I'm not necessarily a LeBron fanatic. I used to be a LeBron fan. I'm, I'm more of a, I guess, a neutral on the guy. Maybe a little bit critical of him now. But we don't want to hear those excuses no more. The Lakers got to get it done, man. The Lakers have to get it done this year. Because we don't know how much longer LeBron's going to be able to play at, at this level where he's still a top 10 player. Maybe top 5, but I think more like top 6, 7. Okay? Anthony Davis, there's no guarantee he's going to resign with the Lakers. He most likely will, but you don't know. There's rumors out there. Okay? They have to win it this year. As much as the media pumps up this team, give them an excuse when they lose, okay? They have to win the title this year. And Laker fans expect excellence. When LeBron James signed with this franchise, okay, he knew the stakes when he first signed up. He knew what was what was going to come, all right? He knew. That's like if Kobe Bryant in 2013 decided for whatever reason, maybe I know he never would have done it in real life, but let's just say he decided to sign with the Chicago Bulls, knowing damn well that he's going to be playing in the shadow of Michael Jordan. Okay? Bulls fans, knowing the rivalry between Kobe and, and Mike when it comes to the media hype at the time, know we're going to compare everything he does to Mike. And anywhere where he falls short, we're going to kill him. That's what Laker fans are doing to LeBron. They were constantly comparing him to, to Kobe when Kobe was still playing. LeBron fans were constantly saying he was better than Kobe. I was I was of the opinion of that until a couple years ago when I saw the light. Hallelujah.
that's it, man. If you wanna, if you want LeBron James to to really start getting that respect that a lot of you guys think that we don't show him, then it'll help if he improve his overall balance to four and nine, four and six in the finals. They can win a championship this year because if they lose again. If they lose again in the playoffs, look, that's all I'm saying. You've been warned. If they lose again in the playoffs, after all of this hype, after all of the expectations, especially, especially if they lose to the Clippers and Kawhi dominates him yet again after it was perhaps possible Kawhi may have signed the Lakers if Mr. Big Mouth didn't say all this could be yours in two years. If that happens, do you know what Laker fans are going to do in L.A.? These motherfuckers start better wearing disguises. LeBron better wear a fucking big-ass goddamn groucho nose and glasses and wear a hat. And Anthony Davis better fucking start wearing makeup and acting like he's a seven-foot-tall old Asian, uh, Asian guy or something because they better fucking, oh, my God. Laker fans are going to fucking go through the roof after all this fucking hoopla from horse, the horse sharp, and all these fucking guys, and they ultimately lose. I don't even want to think about it. That's it. It's championship or bust, man. If y'all guys win a championship, look, that's gonna be probably the big. That's gonna be the second biggest championship in his career, behind the one with Cleveland. And if he wins a championship with the Lakers and it's his fourth championship, then that truly cements LeBron's legacy as one of the all-time greats. Okay? Um, but if they lose, ah, 